The company Tesla has recently revealed the robot concept, which would work on framework already created through its autopilot system. This type of robot will initially be more of a task oriented bot, but it has opened up a wide debate on how lifelike a humanoid robot can be. However, I have covered this before, and one of the main challenges is that most of the robotic research out there is compartmentalized, meaning that some robots are built for locomotion, others are made for social interaction, and others are just purely built for task orientation. And this is really problematic because you need all of these three attributes in a lifelike humanoid robot. Now, I do think that Tesla is taking the right approach on development because they are basing it on existing technology, which is basically its autopilot system in cars. It is very interesting to see how cars have slowly progressed and climbed the scale of automation. As of right now, we have around a level 4 development and a handful of companies like Waymo are engaged in experimental testing. And the ultimate level 5, which is full out automation with no intervention, is still a few years away. However, once we do reach level 5, it could be translated over into humanoid robots. But we have to keep in mind that these neural networks are primarily vision based. And it's only one little piece of the puzzle for a lifelike humanoid robot. So there are critical attributes that a robot has to have. And I know I'm not going to cover them all, but I'm just going to go over the basic ones. And the first critical attribute is the sense of touch for object manipulation. There is already quite a bit of research in developing robots which have a limited sense of touch. One good example of this is a 3D printed exoskeleton stemming from Columbia University. It has 32 photodiodes and 30 LEDs with a skin of reflective silicone which acts as a light barrier. So when the robot touches something, the soft exterior deforms and the photodiodes detect the changing light levels from the LEDs. This allows it to determine where contact is being made and the intensity of the pressure so it's highly accurate. A different approach would be to implement a spiky neural network to encode and process temporal information. FZI in Germany has already built this into a type of robotic arm and each finger is outfitted with a neural circuit which detects contact using currents of motors and velocity of joints. A controller is also activated to regulate how much force the finger exerts. This is probably the closest thing to a human sense of touch and this allows it to adapt to a wide variety of objects so it should be able to clean the dishes. In my opinion, I think SNN or spiky neural networks will be the way to go in the short term. And this is only going to get better with neuromorphic computing, but I will get to that in a little bit. Now, another critical sense that the future humanoid robot will have to have is auditory sensing, but this will likely be more focused on speech recognition. This type of technology has already been employed in digital personal assistants, smart speakers, and smart homes. And I'm pretty sure that most of us are aware of the Alexa. Many speech applications are powered by automatic speech recognition and natural language processing, which basically means converting audio to text and figuring out the meaning of this text. As you all know, this is easier said than done because speech contains accents, emotions, and other variations. The first generation of commercial humanoid robots will likely be task oriented So if you tell it to wash the dishes, it will verify if you want the dishes cleaned and then proceed on with the task. Now, it's probably going to be heavy reliant on this type of process initially because you wouldn't want the robot receiving a wrong command and then find out that it's mowing the neighbor's lawn two hours later. The ultimate goal would be for the robot to understand what it's feeling. And it's just a little bit too early to say whether or not that is actually possible because it is bordering on self-awareness. However, robotics might reach a level where it might be able to imitate feeling and unless you programmed it, you wouldn't know the difference anyways. Another critical attribute is obviously locomotion. Boston Dynamics is pretty much leading the front when it comes to task oriented robots. This begins with real time perception and a model which can predict motion over time. Their Atlas robot is an excellent mobile hydraulic system. It has over 28 hydraulic joints and overall this achieves a speed of 2.5 meters per second. The robot works by utilizing information available to its perception system and selecting behaviors appropriate to its environment via online. Essentially, it's mixing offline and online templates. But there could be a limitation to this type of approach because it's not modeling every possible move out there. Deep reinforcement learning might be able to break through this problem. 
as it can seamlessly transition from training in a simulation environment to a physical robot without any real training or offline steps. This means that the angles, torque and other factors passes through a network and the robot can learn to walk regardless of the terrain. In my opinion, deep reinforcement learning is the way to go for future humanoid robots, at least in terms of locomotion, because this can actually adapt to its environment and a human doesn't have to put in all these different models. Now, another critical component, which is often overlooked, is its power source. Atlas has 3.7 kilowatt hour lithium ion batteries, which gives it roughly an hour of operating time. But this can be a real problem in future robots because tasks such as cutting the lawn or getting groceries could take longer than an hour. Now, this could become a big challenge to solve because there are many design factors to consider temperature range, specific energy, and energy density. So the bigger question is whether or not batteries will be the power source of the future. Yes, it is true that there are many different batteries coming out, including graphene and sodium ion. So potentially there could be a battery out there which has a very fast charging time and high energy density. But for now, this is a big problem, and I don't think that robots will be running on this type of power source in the future. The last and most important attribute of a humanoid robot is its processing unit. As you know, tons of research is being made into quantum computers, and there have been advancements in error correction and qubit stability. It's still a little bit early to tell whether or not quantum algorithms will actually become practical. But if they do, it could open up new possibilities for processing large quantities of data in order to make predictions and decisions. If this comes to fruition, we will see robots which can actually seem to think for themselves along with very realistic digital AI systems. The world really needs that kind of computing, but as of right now, there are neuromorphic computing chips which are making huge strides. This type of computing enables a neural type of structure which basically mimics the human brain to create algorithm approaches to solve complex problems. And this particular chip has 130,000 neurons, which is a far cry from the 80 billion neurons in a human brain, but it's a start. The benefit of this hardware is that it has extremely low power consumption, but it's made for spiking neural networks. So it can solve some of the problems which I have talked about before, like the sense of touch and locomotion. In the future, this type of architecture might switch to optical hardware, basically light computing, and we could see a very rapid development in the amount of neurons that these chips can have. This will translate into very rapid developments in artificial intelligence. Now, this might not emerge in humanoid robotics right away because that's a very expensive sector, but it is very possible that we will see a digital AI assistant, which will probably be smart enough to act as your friend or companion. As a conclusion, the future humanoid robot will need critical attributes in order to become commercialized. This includes perception, locomotion, a viable energy source, along with advanced processing. Many companies are just focusing on one or just a few of these attributes. So it's probably going to take collaboration or technology transfer in order to develop a fully complete humanoid robot for the market. We will probably initially see task-oriented bots, but these will have no personalities whatsoever. However, in 15 to 20 years, we could probably see something which has all these attributes and it might seem like a lifelike human. However, I want to re-emphasize that neuromorphic computing and SNNs are going to drastically change things. This could mean that we could see very real, lifelike digital AI systems within the next five to 10 years. Combined with VR, this could lead to very interesting interactions. But I would like to know what you think about all these developments. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.